Welcome to Fusion Tonight. Fusion is a worship talk show produced in the studios of First United Methodist Church in Cedar Falls, Iowa. We're going to laugh, sing, pray, give, and learn together. Now, scream and yell, jump up and down for our host, Lauren Schofield. Welcome to Fusion. Oh my gosh, there's a big audience tonight. I wasn't aware of how many people came in. <laughs> Welcome to Fusion. Things look a little different tonight. John Cooper's not with us. He was not feeling well. I mean, he's with us, but not here with oh. us. <laughs> he's, he's just not feeling well. With us. <laughs> I'm not off to a great start so far. Um, so yeah, I'm hosting Fusion tonight with a guest host. Guest host? That I think some of you should know. Pastor Karen. Thank you. Yes. So as Lauren and I were talking, you know, now that John's not here, I said to Lauren, I don't do jokes. Do you? And she doesn't do jokes no. either. But let me tell you why I don't do jokes. Um, I told a joke once. When I was in elementary, um, I heard this great joke at school, and I couldn't wait to get home to tell my mom this joke. And so I go running in the house, and I said to my mom, Mom, the smartest kid in our class is going deaf. And she said, oh, no, who? And I said, what? And she said, who? And I said, what? And she said, who? And I said, what? And then I got in trouble be because she thought I was making fun of somebody. So I thought, that's it. No, I'm never telling another joke. So that's all I got, Lauren. No jokes. That was great. That was better than I could do. So thank you, Pastor Karen, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm telling my mother. Well, I can't tell my mother, but she knows that you thought it was great. <laughs> thank you. All right, we are going to switch up the order just a little bit tonight, and I would like to start with open mic and prayer time. So for those of you who aren't familiar, this is just a chance to share our joys and concerns, what's happening, what can we pray about, what can we celebrate. So it is your turn to share. Alana. I shared last week about my uh, best friend from high school whose brother was in hospice. Um, he did pass away this past week. Mm -hmm. Well, we will continue to keep your friend and her family in our prayers. Um, there is definitely two sides to something like that. There's the grief and there's also some relief. So we, uh, we celebrate that we know where he's at now and we know that, that things, are, things are good. Amy. My birthday. Today yeah. is your birthday? Happy birthday, Amy. Happy birthday. Should we sing to you or? Okay. You already, okay, you already got something to you. Okay, we won't embarrass you then. How old are you, can I ask? 13, okay, so it's not offensive to ask when you're that age. That's, that's still young. Well, happy birthday. All right, yes, Slate. There's this really interesting book on faith and finance that comes out today. Oh, you don't say. You don't say. It does come out today, yes. I'm very excited, yes. Anybody else? No? All right. Join me in a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for gathering us here tonight. Um, despite the, the less than ideal weather, Lord, we're still all able to be here and to gather in your name, and that is a blessing. We thank you for all the exciting things that are happening in our lives, um, whether that be birthdays, achievements at school and at work, um, Lord, the things in our personal lives that we celebrate, we know that you celebrate with us and we thank you for all of the joy that we get to experience. Lord, we also pray for the grief in our lives. We pray for Alana's best friend and her family on the loss of just a wonderful person in their lives, Lord. We know that they are feeling so much grief, but that there's also the flip side of peace, knowing that um, he is with you now, Lord. And that is the ultimate, the ultimate peace. Lord, there are things that we might not have shared tonight that are still on our hearts that we either want to celebrate or we need time to, to process and to grieve. And we ask that you would walk with us as we do those things, Lord, that you would be with us, provide us the strength and 
the courage that we need to make it through whatever life throws at us because as humans, it's not easy. Lord, we praise you just for the fact that we get to live this wonderful life that you've given us in the world that you've given us. And we thank you for each person in this room and the gifts that we all bring collectively. And Lord, as we pray tonight, we lift these things up to you with the prayer that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to introduce to you guys our mission of the month during offering time. So... I am not quite sure how this is going to work without music, I'll be honest with you. Okay, there is a video, all right. And as you watch the video, I encourage you to um, learn more about our mission of the month, and if you feel called to do so, bring forward an offering to the jars at either entrance. Hey everybody, it's Chris here in the First UMC Media Studios Blanket Fort. Our January Mission of the Month is Church World Service's Blankets Plus program. Church World Service is a great Christian organization. They're also the folks who bring us the crop walk in the fall. Now if you've ever made a blanket fort like this one, you know that a blanket is a pretty versatile thing. When we're cold, we can wrap up in a blanket to keep heat in. And when we don't have shelter, blankets can be used for that too. A blanket can be used as a bag to hold all your belongings if you don't have anything else to use. 10 bucks buys one of these blankets that Church World Service will give to families that are displaced by disaster or, or by poverty. So who gets these blankets? Well, people in our own country who, who lose their homes due to tornadoes or fires or floods, or people in other countries around the world who are displaced by conflict. In addition to blankets, Church World Service also works around the world to rebuild lives and communities through agricultural, educational, and vocational support. Church World Service's programs are, are designed to help refugees not just survive, but to, but to prosper in their new homes. You know, a blanket might not seem like much until you've lost all that you had. And then a blanket is everything. It's security, it's warmth, it's shelter. Church World Service Blankets is our January mission of the month. You can give online at our secure giving portal at aboutfirst.com slash giving. And we thank you for supporting our January mission of the month. All right, for our main event tonight, Karen and I are gonna tag team it. So it's going to look a little bit different, but I'm really excited. We have some good stuff to talk about. Should I sit now? It's two on the couch, let's do yes. two on the couch. If you can't tell, we didn't really have a chance to rehearse how this was gonna go. <laughs> we don't need rehearsal. We're winging it. All right. So Lauren, first of all, tell us about the book that is available as of today. Oh, yes. If you were, if you were in church yes. Sunday, you, you heard a little bit about it, but, but we're gonna hear more about it from Lauren. Yeah. So. In short, I wrote a book, and it's available for sale, and it is called Faith and Finance, 12 Deep Dive Devotional Activities to Help You Manage Your Money God's Way. And kind of like I talked about this on Sunday, it kind of started as a creative outlet for me. Um, I did a lot of devotional writing during COVID when that was our main form of interacting with our congregation was on Facebook and the mm -hmm. devotions that we did. And so that was something that was familiar to me. And also, um, I think I have kind of a unique career experience being a youth minister and also an accountant, which sounds very opposite. But I've seen how those two fields kind of relate in ways that people wouldn't expect. And so I took my passions and my knowledge and I wrote devotions that were 
based on personal finance and I turned them into a book and it was a way for me to kind of bring joy into an otherwise kind of dark and weird world of money and numbers and mm -hmm. something that's not really very fun for people to talk about but I hope that I made it fun with what I've done. So as I, as I look through that, um, it looks to me like each devotion starts with scripture, right? Yeah. With, with something from the Bible. And then you kind of talk about that a little bit and unpack it. So before we get it, tell us, how do, you, how do you write a book? I mean, jotting down devotions is one thing, but getting them together, putting, how, how, do you do, how does that work? How do you do that? I would say writing is like 10% of it. Actually, writing the content is not a huge part of what it takes to put a book together. So over time, yes, I wrote these devotions, and I compiled them, and I put them in an order that kind of made sense to me. But there was also a component of, you know, after the scripture and the thinking points, I crafted some reflection questions. So that took a lot of research on my part because I didn't go to seminary, but I want to make sure that what I'm asking people to look up and reflect on is something that's biblically sound and that is based on the truth that we read in God's mm. scripture, his word. And so that took a lot of research and just learning about, you know, different translations in the Bible, how things come across to different people and um, the context behind verses in the Bible, um, you know, one thing that kind of, kind of has come to irk me over the years is when people use Bible verses out of context to, you know, argue a point. And if you know what's going on in the Bible where that verse is found, you know, and that's not really what's happening that's there. Saying, and yeah. so, yeah, it took a lot of research and it took a lot of, a lot of artsy, like, graphic design and all that kind of stuff, putting it together, formatting it, uploading it, printing off proof copies to see what it looked like and getting the color scheme right. And I think all parts of my brain were firing on all cylinders the whole time I was working on this, but that's what made it enjoyable. I was so impressed with your graphics. And you have a sheet in your hand, so Lauren's going to talk about that in a little bit, but that gives you an example. It, it's just not words on a page. I mean, you mm -hmm. really... Um, put some work into this, and just the balance and everything, the way it looks. Also, um, you explain at the beginning of the book, like even what translations you use, which is what you, what you need to do. Um, you checked on copyright for using those, those Bibles. You know, how, how can I use those? How do I have to um, acknowledge that I'm using? How do I do all that? Um, but even why you chose the um, versions that you chose, which is, is really right. fascinating. So also, if you notice on the sheet that we handed out, see the copyright thing down there? Because Lauren, this is Lauren's, she did this, she can give us permission to make copies of this, and you can take this with you. I was telling her, like, um, when I teach classes, like in the seminary, if we ever copy somebody's stuff off without their permission to do it, we can use it in the classroom, but we can't let people take it out of the room. They've got to leave it with us, and we have to destroy it. So Lauren went, to, you know, went that far to do that. So mm -hmm. thank you for thinking through all that stuff. There's a lot to it. And then you actually, I would say, self-published it. You, I did. Yeah, you yes. put it together. You, you designed the, the cover yourself. I did. Yes, cover to cover, it's all my work. So I never hired a graphic designer. I never hired... I, I had people in my life who are very intelligent and very generous who edited for me, but I didn't have to hire an editor, which can sometimes be very expensive. Yes, so yeah, cover to cover, that's all my work. Hold it up again. Let them see it. I think you've got more talent than just writing things on a paper. I mean, look at this. It, oh, thanks. Visually, um, like I said, very balanced. It's, the color is great. It's absolutely well, great. thank you. So, um, so tell us, you talked Sunday. You used one of your um, devotions out of there and um, the scripture reference and stuff. Sort of walk us through that. If we were doing that lesson together, how might we, we do that together? Would you, would you do that? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. So the lesson that I used was on giving joyfully. And that was something that obviously tied into our sermon series, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that I think is important for us, even beyond the generosity campaign. It's important to know, you know, what is our intent behind giving joyfully? And so the scripture that I chose for this devotion was one that we showed on Sunday as well, and it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. 
and from the New Living Translation, and it says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And so the thinking point that I provided with that was that giving is one of the most powerful things that we can do with our money to honor God. Because he has blessed us, we can bless those around us. But the act of giving isn't as important to God as our heart behind it. Are we giving because we feel pressured to? Or are we giving because we joyfully want to serve others? No matter the amount, if we are giving generously and cheerfully, God is pleased. And so the reflection questions on the following page go along with that and encourage you to look up a separate scripture and reflect on it along with some personal questions to get you to examine your heart, that heart check that we talked about on Sunday as well. And so when, we, when you talk about a reflection, I would think of a reflection as something, there's not a right or a wrong answer. It's not like, no, I got to get this, not. what's the right answer here? It's like, as I think about that, it, it's just writing down what you think about it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. writing down what you think about it and what it makes you feel and what it hopefully helps you to kind of dig up and realize about your own life that maybe there's things that you're doing absolutely right and maybe there's things that you want to change. So a reflection could be something like, wow, I've never thought of that before. I've never seen it that way. Or right. I'm not sure I buy that. That's a reflection too. You yeah. know, it's like, no, I'm not, not, no, not there, you know, kind of stuff. So yeah, no just honest answer. reflection. Yeah. Right. And then the page that you guys have in your hand is um, an action page. So it encourages you to actually put what you've reflected on into action. And the paragraph at the top kind of describes where generosity kind of comes from in the Bible. And we talk about tithing and that Very being good. 10%, which is a benchmark. And a lot of people, um, depending on your stage in life, 10% is a lot. Mm -hmm. And it might not be doable for everybody at, at each point in their lives. And so that's why I really wanted to highlight that it's not all about money and it's not all about the amount that you give, but it is 100% about your intention behind it and your motivation when you give things. So the first question on there, what inspires me to give? Um, if you all want to take a moment and follow along with us and fill it out, let me know if you need a pen. Amy, our wonderful volunteer youth, will pass out Amy. pens if you need one. If birthday you raise your girl. Hand. Is that the birthday girl? Amy, the birthday that is girl. the birthday girl. She's giving gifts on her birthday. But um, that first question, what inspires me to give, is something that I just hope that sparks um, that motivation in you and, and really gets to the why. Like, why do I give? Why do I give money? So, Lauren, if you were going to answer that, I'm really putting you on the spot. What inspires you to give right now? Because you're giving part of, when, when people buy this book, Part of what they, what they pay comes right back. You're going to give it right back to the church. Right, yes. Um, you've also given a lot of, of like, a lot of your time around this. What inspires you to give right now? How would you answer that? Right. I think what inspires me the most is knowing that somebody else's life will have a positive impact. Um, Thank you very much. I think that that's cool. I... I'm very much a helper at heart. I want to connect with and help people, which I think is part of why my job as an accountant isn't always, you know, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I don't always get to help people, but <laughs> what inspires me to give, whether it be financially or time or skills, is that somebody else's life will hopefully be better because of something that I've done. And even if it's a small thing, I think small things add up to make a big difference. You know, for somebody who doesn't understand money or taxes, people like you help people like me a whole lot because I don't have to worry about understanding it. I can just call you. There, so that's there is that. Yeah. There is you know that. what? I, I have to tell you what inspires me to give tonight. Um, for for our, our January giving, our January mission, that um, display down in the, the gathering space with baby Jesus, you know, who shows up all during Advent and, and Christmas around here, is in that manger with one of those church world blankets over him. That inspires me to give more than Chris in that, that blanket tent, that, you know? <laughs> that, that baby, you're cute, Chris, but you're not as cute as that little baby in the, in the manger. That inspires me. It's like, you know what I think I see is I think I see those, those babies in um, war-torn countries, you know, that they show pictures of, and I think, oh, somebody get them a blanket, you know? Right. Um, 
So anyway, I get inspired to give by that. Yeah. So, there's so many things. Yeah. And like like you said, there's no right or wrong answer to any of these, no. but it's something that just comes out of your heart, the things that you're thinking and feeling as you read it. And that kind of leads into the my giving purpose statement. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what do I hope to achieve through my giving? So if you've ever seen, like, sometimes businesses have a mission or a vision, I think this is kind of a personal version of that. So, like, what is your purpose statement for giving, whatever you might be giving? That is a deep question. Your, the, the title of your book, it's, um, you, you have deep dive devotional activities. That is a deep question. I mean, it's it like your purpose statement, like you said, a mission statement or vision statement. And I, I think a lot of times over our lives, I mean, I think my own life, that would have changed over my life. The, yeah. the, the, my purpose statement for giving. But th that's, that's a deep question. That's one that you know, I think all of us can answer depending on where we are, but it's, it takes some thought. It does. I don't think, I, yeah. I thought about it all day. I'm not ready to write, write that down because I'm not sure how I want to put that together. Yeah. That's a great question or a great opportunity there. And I think it is important to know that some of these answers might change depending mm -hmm. on where you are in life. Um, and you know, I have grown up, you know, with a desire to help others and connect, and that's my, my purpose behind it. And I think sometimes we forget that some people have maybe the wrong intention behind their giving. When it comes to be December and they need to get a tax break uh -huh. and they give, I've seen things like that even. And so it reminds me just how much more important it is to give because your heart has called you to give and not because your financial statements have called you to give. That's good. You know, I want to share, can I share something? Can I share this? We talked about this staff meeting the yes, other day. Yes, please Because this next one is how can I give? And one of the things that you're so good about and you were so good about on Sunday is to remind us that giving isn't just financial. That giving comes in, there's a lot of ways that we can give. So I, I want to show you, this is the way one of our um, little ones, Andy, um, gave this week. This was a picture that was on the table for the kids to color on Sunday. So she colored this. And this is not the first time. Andy colors pictures, and then she gets, gets them into the church office, and she writes notes to all of us. So this was the note that she wrote on the back of this to, to us, staff meeting. So this was part of our staff meeting. We read this, and this is what Andy says. This is giving. This is, man, her heart was right. She said, to the church, um, a special thank you. Thank you for the kindness you bring to our hearts the time you give to us as you give us new things to think about, the seats you give us to sit on, and um, spreading your heart, or something about your hard work to keep this church running. This is a little kid. This is how she gave. Um, and I mean, we had a blast with that in, in staff meeting. To, to start our week with that, it's like, yeah, I'm going to work hard this week because Andy, you know, colored this picture for us. So, um, how, you know, how do you give? There's lots of different ways. We can all give some way. We can. Yeah, and yes. not just to the church. How do we no. give to each other? How do we, yeah, give to our families? Yeah, that brings us into the next section of that, which is write down ways that you could contribute each of the following. So think about your time, your skills, and your finances. And again, getting mm -hmm. into our seasons of life where things change, yeah. I think when maybe when you're younger, you're at the height of your career or early on in parenthood even, you don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time, um, but maybe you have more finances. Yeah. And as you get older and you retire, maybe then you have more time yeah. and you get to really enjoy what you do as far as giving that way. And so these answers are meant to be fluid. They're meant to inspire you to think about it continuously. And I really hope that this isn't just like a one and done thing, but it's something that can be looked back on and done again yeah, and again. Good idea. You know, and I think, um, like, I think of all our, our youth sitting up there in the corner, um, that when I think of, of the generosity of this church and the way that people from this church give so that they can um, do their mission trips, I, that's just always yeah. so inspiring, you know, because so sometimes we're the giver, but also as givers, sometimes we're the receivers too. And that's yeah. the beautiful thing about that. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I think we forget that it takes a lot of people to make things happen. Yes. And you might not think that you play a big part, but collectively you do. Yes. Because it takes so many people to make things happen. Yes. So tell us, because I'm watching the clock, because um, I want to make sure we, we get everybody where they need to be next. Yes. Um, 
how do people get your book? Right. So I have a website. It's called faithfinancelife.com. And the book can be ordered online there. And for members of our congregation, if you would like to pick up a copy in person, there will be available in the main office. So $20 in the office. And the price is a little different online, mainly because there's shipping involved that I don't handle. But Yeah, they um, ship it right to them, yes. Yes, you'll get it shipped right to you, so I don't have to handle that. So that $20 of that, and yeah, that's part of all the, the shipping yes. and stuff and all the stuff that you had to do, the copyright, everything you had to do to get that out. That helps to cover yes, that. Yes, that flat that And flat I'm going to say it one more time because you don't say it, is that you have said that you're going to um, give $2 from each book that you sell um, back to the church. So thank you. That's that's yes. very generous. I really hope that it makes a difference and it you know, when you hear per book, you know, the cost and the amount that comes back to the church doesn't sound that significant. But again, it's the collective difference yes, that that we can all make when we when we team up and our generosity multiplies the more that we share it. So I hope that this is an example of that to everyone. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And will you sign those books and stuff? You'll, you'll autograph and all that kind of stuff. If, if you really want me to. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. That Thank you, Lord. Let's give her a hand. I'm so proud of her. I know Thank an author. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's our show for tonight. It was the Karen and Lauren show, and the place didn't burn down without John here, so it was successful. 